Hi you guys, it's Nabila. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple quill flourish. Offhand flourishing can seem really intimidating, but if you have some experience with the pointed pen, I'm going to break it down for you. It's a great project to get started if you're new to flourishing. I'll show you the drills that I use to practice and get better as well as the materials I use and together we'll make a quill flourish. I use a pencil, a straight holder fitted with a pretty flexible dip pen nib. I'm using a Leonard Principle for the demo. Uh, paper that's really smooth, basically the smoother the better, it will save you a lot of headache. And some really free-flowing free ink, uh, walnut ink is a good choice, iron gel as well. I'll list the materials I'm using as well as alternatives in the description box below. So I use the classical grip for offhand flourishing and this is how you do it. Instead of the normal way that you'd hold um, the pen like this or like this for writing, instead hold it between your thumb and your index finger and then you want to balance the end of the pen onto your first finger. Basically you'll have your hand at kind of an angle then and your um, hand will be able to move around while being balanced on the, the joint here of your little finger. And that way you have a lot of movement for curvature. You can use your wrist movement to make really nice curves, which you can't do with the normal pen hold. So let's practice that pen hold with some oval drills. I've included a link in the description box below to this uh, sheet as a PDF so you can print it out yourself. And basically we're going to focus on making smooth ovals um, that are consistently spaced. I usually do them in pencil first to get into the rhythm and then move on to a dip pen so that I can practice laying down even shades. It's deceptively difficult, or at least for me it is. So after you've practiced the drills for a while, so you're fairly comfortable, you can get semi-okay ovals, it's not important to be perfect. Um, you can try making a feather. So here's how I do it. Step one is to make the spine. If your ink runs out midway, just don't freak out, don't worry about it, just fill it in with a pen. Retouching is your friend, not your enemy. Now I'm just drawing in the front part of the quill and another line to suggest some thickness in the stem of the feather. So if you look at a feather, you'll see it has the bottom part, which um, is quite thick and then the top part which is really narrow so I like to pencil in the rough outline of what a feather should look like um, so I know kind of where to limit my ovals and I don't need to think about that when I'm actually doing the flourishing now comes the hardest part which is the ovals the key I think is to get them consistently spaced and with similarly weighted shades with this pen grip, the line should be made at an angle of 60 degrees from the body, so don't be afraid to turn the page as you progress down the feather so you get better angle for this grip. You'll notice that if you ever have a case where you have uh, two lines that cross, so in this case the thin part of the oval crosses into uh, part of the previous oval, it looks more pleasing to the eye if it crosses at 90 degrees if they're perpendicular lines. For the top part, which is quite narrow in our model feather, I just make uh, small curves with my regular pen grip. Okay, so now the stressful part of the flourish is done because you have all the difficult to make strokes done. And here's where the fun part comes in. Uh, I think the most beautiful flourishes have a solid structure, which hopefully you have by now, with lots of little added details. And I like to choose between one of three different line types to add between the ovals. A kind of squiggly line, a zipper stitch, or a wheat. The easiest is the squiggly line, so I'm going to use that for now. You can use your wrist motion to swing the end of the squiggly line to follow the curve of the oval. For the top part, again you can use your wrist motion to throw some light curves to give it some volume and interest. And that's how I do a simple quill flourish. It looks really spectacular if you do it white on black paper with gold accents. So that's it for today, thank you so much for watching and as per usual all the information is in the description box below. So if you like this video please like it and if you're interested in calligraphy and penmanship videos please hit the subscribe button.